super excited to be here be it here tonight. Cheney, you can go to the next slide. So I'm just going to kind of for the steering committee members go over go over our Zoom rules. Um, and I know you got many of you have heard this many, many times, but if you can turn your video on just so we can see each other's faces and, and mute when you're not speaking just to keep that background, background noise down. Um, Fernando is here and he's you can chat with him if you're having any technical issues. Um, and so as a reminder, I know we have several members of the public joining us tonight and, and that's exciting for us to see. Um, but just as a reminder, the meeting discussion is going to be with the steering committee members. But if you're a member of the public, you can send questions in the chat and we'll try to answer them at the end of the meeting. Um, you probably just um, got a notice about this, but the, as a reminder, the meeting is being recorded. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Thanks. And so our agenda for this evening. So first we're gonna have a brief presentation from the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure on the 38th Avenue corridor study. And then we'll have some time after that for you guys to ask questions. Um, and then we're gonna have the, the planning team is gonna present um, the draft mobility section of the draft plan. And then um, we'll shoot for a break after that. And then we're gonna come back for a discussion to get your guys' input on that, that section of the plan. And then we'll close with next steps. So here we are on our time frame. Um, it's an exciting part of the project because the plan is really starting to take shape. Um, and this is where we're gonna get to discuss specific proposed recommendations with you guys before the draft plan goes public. And the next slide, thanks. Um, and so, you know, our approach to the draft plan, we're really trying to hear what you guys said, have been telling us that we really wanna spend more time reviewing this as a committee. So we're gonna, the plan is to go through it section by section each month. So we're starting this month with mobility. And then in February, we're gonna do quality of life and economy. And in March, we'll review housing and land use. And April, we'll look at the full draft plan focusing on the introduction and implementation sections of the plan. And so I think that's all you're going to hear from me. And now we're gonna have our presentation from the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure on the. 38th Avenue corridor study. I think Justin Bagley from, from Dottie's here tonight to, to speak to that. Actually, I, I actually see Phoebe. Um, so she might oh, okay. see here. Um, I think I saw Justin maybe too. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't see him. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, Justin maybe. and I are both here. Um, I'll be presenting though, um, but we can do intros okay. real quick. So um, Justin, you want to go ahead and introduce while I get the slide set up? <laughs> Sure. Uh, th thanks to the steering committee for having us. I um, My name is Justin Begley. I work for Dottie's um, multimodal planning team. I'm a multimodal planning supervisor. I work with uh, Phoebe and many of the um, Denver folks who are here. And I'm here today to support Phoebe, who's going to be leading the presentation. Great. Thanks. Um, so I'll go ahead and get so I'm trying to share my screen because we do have some slides and it says that I uh, do not have the ability to do that. Uh, so, I'll that real quick. Thank you. Um, and yeah, while Fernando is um, setting me up there, I can introduce myself. Um, so my name is Phoebe Fuchs. I'm a planner at um, the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure at the City and County of Denver. <laughs> Um, I work on Justin's team, and we're excited to announce that we're going to be conducting a uh, corridor study on West 38th Avenue this year. Okay, cool. So, can y'all see my screen? Great. Um, okay, so. Um, West 38th Avenue corridor study. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be conducting the study in 2023. Um, we've just barely begun the scoping process for this study. Um, so my goal today is really just to confirm the feedback that we've already heard from you all regarding 38th Avenue um, through the NPI process. And then we'd like to open up um, the discussion to hear what you all would like to see come out of this study as a next step from the NPI. Uh, so first and foremost, we know that 38th Avenue um, is part of the city's Vision Zero High Injury Network, uh, meaning that it experiences a pretty high concentration of traffic collisions that result 
in serious injuries and fatalities, and recent fatal crashes have really reinstated the need for safety improvements along the corridor. Uh, what we've heard from you all through uh, reviewing the uh, feedback you provided um, on the Near Northwest NPI um, is that 38th Avenue is not working well for anyone, whether you're walking, biking, driving, or taking transit. And so we understand that improving safety as well as enhancing transit service and incorporating green infrastructure, as well as other amenities like um, lighting and seating are important priorities for you for 38th. Also from your feedback, we understand that um, crossing 38th is uncomfortable. There's a uh, lack of bike facilities um, and sidewalks are pretty poor quality. And additionally, we know that you all would like to see wider sidewalks, uh, street trees and landscaping, safe places to bike um, in the area and calmer traffic on 38th. So what this corridor study will do is um, collaborate with uh, you all, the community, to confirm um, the vision for 38th Avenue based on the feedback we've already heard. Uh, we'll, then under, we'll then study the corridor to better understand those challenges and opportunities. And then finally, um, the study will develop near and long-term recommendations to achieve that vision. Um, so pretty typical corridor study process for the city. So um, here's just an estimated um, timeline. Like I said, um, we're really early on scoping this project, but this is kind of what we think or how we think it'll play out. Um, will likely take place over about a year, depending on what um, ends up being included in the scope and kind of how much analysis and how much work we have to do. Um, we're doing that scoping right now, um, hoping to kick off in a few months and then wrap up about a year later. Uh, so thanks for listening to that quick presentation. Um, we're happy to answer any questions you all may have. Um, and like I said, we'd also like to turn it around and give you all the opportunity to provide any additional feedback about 38, um, help us confirm that the feedback that we've heard is accurate, and um, just in general, what, what else we need to know to set up this project for success. Um, so if you prefer, you can email me or Justin with um, questions, comments, um, or just even if you'd like to stay in touch with the project, uh, feel free, our emails are up on the screen there. Um, but yeah, we'll open it up now to you all to see um, see if, if anyone would like to chime in right now. Uh, go ahead, it looks like we have a hand raised. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi, uh, just one question. It looks like this is a one-year scope and will NPI already be adopted or is the hope that the results of this study actually make it into NPI itself? Thank you. Yeah, great question. Um, so we've been coordinating really closely with um, Sung and the um, NPI team to, um, so essentially like we're, we're seeing this project as somewhat of a next step of the recommendations that come out of the NPI. Um, because there's been so much feedback about 38th and we understand it's one of those quarters that just has a whole lot of needs and a whole lot of challenges. Um, you know, this study is intended to address um, that as a next step from the NPI. So uh, we'll be coordinating closely to um, smoothly transition from the NPI into the study. Yeah, yeah. so Tripti, we've been, yeah, again, coordinating with uh, Dottie on this. And this is just one example of, you know, how a recommendation from the plan can be advanced, uh, particularly, Along for some along these corridors that are really complicated, you know, requires additional study. So um, I think this is you know one great example of you know how we can look at plan recommendations and see them come to life, um, whether it's through additional studies, um, additional planning, um, or some that you know we can just work on right away. So I have a follow up, but I'll wait till other folks get a chance to speak. I can't quite see everyone's hand who's raised, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and I, I don't know who had their hand up next. Um, maybe David. Hi, thanks. Um, I, I guess I'm just concerned that I'm really not hearing a sense of urgency that I think is needed at this time. A, a year and a half study, more surveys to confirm what you've already been told. Uh, people are dying on the street and I, I feel like we need some quick builds and that will really be effective and 
waiting another year and a half with more surveys, studies, meetings, to me, it just seems inadequate. I hear you, David, and appreciate the sense of urgency. Um, we'll definitely be moving as fast as we can to address the safety concerns specifically and um, have been talking to our Vision Zero team about conducting a road safety audit and trying to strategize ways to get that done sooner than later, as soon as possible. Um, while the corridor study will meanwhile take into account all the other concerns um, or all the other needs that the corridor has like green infrastructure and street amenities, things like that. But um, that was why I threw that safety slide in there to emphasize that that is um, a near-term priority for the city and we're, move and we're doing everything we can as fast as possible to address those fatalities. Uh, Tripp, did you, did you have a follow-up from your last question? Uh, yes, just wanna be clear about you know, kind of how this came to be. And uh, is, is this is this based on the $50,000 that Amanda Sandoval secured for this study, which the impetus for that was a study or some, you know, version of a study that Puma did that up to about 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaking to say this corridor needs to be studied. And I guess I'm just looking at this saying, you guys are calling this an MPI win when this is a, this is a, a you know, indication from 10 years ago and we're implementing things based on recommendations that literally, at least part of NPI, haven't even been approved. How, but I just wanna be clear, am I crossing the wrong, you know, things over there or are those all related? Dana, you want me to jump into this one? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I would, uh, first of all, speaking to, you know, something from, from 10 years ago, I don't believe these are directly related. I can tell you um, council office is somebody who we um, will be checking in with shortly after this meeting to talk more about uh, a budget allocation that they will, we were able to secure to help supplement this budget. So this project was already moving forward and we have an opportunity now um, to work more closely with the council office, the needs and the things that were discovered as part of this MPI, um, to be opportunistic to advance this quarter study with more information than, you know, we don't have to go revisit um, with such intensity and extensiveness because we have the MPI behind us in this work that's been done. So um, we're able to go faster because the MPI has set us up for success moving into the quarter study. Uh, um, Nola. Hi, um, good evening. I wanted to just mention the, um, if there, if there were things that could happen faster, um, or like as, as, um, what do they call it? Like the pop-up type things or painting, um, 38th and clay would be a great place to have uh, more bike facilities. I know, I, and I'm curious if all the things that were happening on Clay to make that street more bike friendly, if if that includes 38th also, because that's a a big bike crossing place. And I'm speaking about my high school son that rides his bike down Clay and then crosses 38th every day um, to get to North. So just wondering if that's um, uh, kind of possible as a Definitely part of the study, but also maybe something um, quicker could happen there. And then I was also curious, there was a conversation in the plan earlier about the 38th and federal intersection. And I'm kind of wondering how that intersects with this. Sure, so for the first question, um, I believe Clay was identified as um, a bike facility through um, another planning effort. The um, Northwest CTN. And so I believe that one is either slated for construction in the near term or um, uh, has been, parts of it have been improved already. We're also coordinating with that group. And yeah, those are the kind of um, things that the study can look to improve um, existing crossings or creating new crossings for people biking. So we'll definitely flag clay um, and other bikeways uh, as priority intersections. And then, um, could you repeat your question about a federal? Um... Uh, 
Um, just in this planning process, we had one meeting where we talked about um, recommendations for the intersection of 38th and federal specifically. And I'm wondering just how that intersects with this study, or if that's like a totally different subject of the NPI. Oh, yeah, sure. So the study will definitely take all the feedback that was um, received through the NPI, um, including um, conversations that you all have had about federal, um, and definitely incorporate that into the study process. Um, cup tea. Oh, I think you're still on mute. Sorry, is Dottie doing the study itself or are we hiring a consultant to do the work? I'm curious about that. And I don't know if Nola, I, maybe I missed this on the presentation. Is this gonna be the entire corridor all the way up to Sheridan? Um, yes, so we'll be leading the study and con hiring consultants for support and the project limits are the entirety of the corridor. So all the way from Sheridan to um, Fox where it turns into Park Avenue. And will it have its own set of um, engagement and public outreach and the opportunity for a community on this? Or is that expected to either happen through MPI or maybe not happen because we're now calling this implementation of a recommendation? So um, we'll definitely be using all of the feedback that we've already received already about 38. Um, you know, we, we've already collected a lot of information and also through the Northwest CTN, Community Transportation Network Project. Um, so, you know, definitely don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel there, but um, we'll absolutely be engage engaging with um, the community to kind of confirm the vision and um, get your input on it, like realistically implementable recommendations. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions, we can probably uh, move on from here, so. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, uh, so next we're going to move on to the draft uh, mobility recommendations. And um, I will, so the plan is to run through all of this um, and then take a break and then we'll come back and subtopic by subtopic, we'll have a discussion and a check-in with the steering committee. Um, because there are a number of uh, general public participants tonight, I just wanna provide some context um, that we are uh, we have sent to um, the steering committee a full um, chapter from the plan. So I'm scrolling through that now so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, but what the steering committee has reviewed is a very detailed um, document with, um, you know, recommendations that go into very specific detail. Um, but what I'm going to present in terms of the slides, because we can't get into all of uh, the nitty gritty um, at the presentation level is going to be a kind of an overview and looking at the uh, the framework and uh, subtopic maps. Um, so you'll get to see sort of the network um, for all of the improvements. Um, just know that the public draft is coming very soon. If you are very eager to review um, this chapter, you can uh, let Sung know, and I'm sure we can um, provide access. We're um, letting the steering committee comment, and then uh, after the steering committee comments, we will uh, make those adjustments, and then we plan to uh, go out to the community with a draft plan in uh, May or June. So just to give everyone else kind of a timeline and expectation around being able to review a document. So back to the presentation, we will go through, as I said, um, the mobility recommendations for the steering committee. These are in order of uh, the draft chapter. So you can follow along if you'd like um, with the document. Um, just to get some uh, background slides, Sung, sorry, I think you were going to do these, um, so oh. I'll let Sung come in, and then I'm. 
Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, before we dive right into the content and meat of the draft recommendations, um, the, as you noticed, the first few pages highlight um, citywide plans and uh, the need to be consistent um, with, but uh, still advance the recommendations at a neighborhood level. So we've been saying that throughout the process, uh, but I just want to give some specific examples of how um, that's done in this chapter specifically. Next slide, please. Um, so for one example, um, if we're looking at 38th, um, the blueprint um, right now, uh, Blueprint Denver calls it a Main Street arterial. Um, so it provides a general vision of having a mix of uses, wide sidewalks, fewer curb, curb cuts, uh, more consistent street trees. Um, so we are able to take some of that direction from Blueprint um, and with the input from the community, we're able to provide more detailed recommendations along that corridor. Um, so if you look at 38 specifically, uh, we, uh, we provide more specific recommendations about improving transit services, um, installing mobility hubs, which are um, bus stops with, with more transit amenities uh, for residents to make those areas safer, identifying specific inter intersections uh, for improvements, um, so just adding another layer of detail to help um, kind of guide future improvements, recommendations, additional studies, and et cetera. So next slide, please. Um, and this is uh, another example. If we look at some of the bike recommendations in the plan, um, there was a you know Denver Moves bicycle plan that was done in 2015 um, and updated. And then also the, the community transportation network planning and design of, uh, of bikeways. So that has been in design, planning, and construction uh, throughout the last three years or so. Um, so if you look at the bike section of the plan, um, it identifies additional bikeways, enhancements to existing ones. Um, and so that's just another, um, an example of how the neighborhood plan is being consistent with, but also uh, building on citywide direction. So I'll turn it over to Cheney here. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, so to go through all of these mobility subtopics, uh, again, I'm going to um, present about uh, maybe like 10 slides, um, and then we'll take a break, give you guys a chance to, um, you know, collect your thoughts, and then we're going to come back and review these in detail, including um, I can, I have each of these maps up where we can kind of zoom in and move around to. Um, but right now we'll just go through an overview. So this is um, this is called the Mobility Opportunities Map. This is really a framework kind of pulling all of the big ideas together. Um, you can see, you know, through all the lines on the map, we're really trying to create a safe network, um, you know, within the near Northwest neighborhoods. Um, there are some areas. Um, like North High and um, over in Northeast Sunnyside, um, down in Jefferson Park, Diamond Hill. Um, these areas currently lack infrastructure because they're big, large blocks. So this is all kind of showing how the future framework um, will pull together, you know, hopefully over time, a, a nice safe grid for biking, transit, walking. We also are looking at um, green infrastructure streets, which um, will be covered in detail in the quality of life section, but we also want to note that on here because they are um, part of the street network. Network. Another thing to, um, and we'll, we'll see this in a little bit more detail in a few slides, but we are on this map introducing the idea of this uh, near northwest loop. It's about a seven mile um, urban trail that would pull together and connect um, an entire, uh, you know, network of green infrastructure, um, biking and, and jogging trails. Um, some of these are just extensions of existing or uh, betterments of existing facilities, um, but you might find unique signage um, and um, art and wayfinding along that route. So we'll go into a little bit more detail about that later. Um, one of the first topics that's brought up are is called balanced corridors. Um, these, just to flip back, are the maroon streets. So this is all of the um, Vision Zero 
uh, high entry network streets of Federal, 38th, and Spear. And then it also includes the busier streets in the neighborhood. Um, so you'll see like 50th, 46th, 44th, um, 32nd, 26th, and then North, South, Clay, Zuni, Tejon, Pecos. Um, so those are the big, the busier streets. They are, they tend to be like the through streets where, tr where uh, traffic is traveling probably a little um, higher speeds than the, than the traditional neighborhood streets. And this is also where we wanna balance a combination of services. So we are dealing with a completely built out um, urban environment and, and we know that right of way is limited, um, yet we wanna achieve a lot of things um, in our streets. And so these balanced corridors are balancing transit, bikes, pedestrians, um, and some cases, uh, you know, increased tree canopy need to address the urban heat, heat island and stormwater to address flooding. Um, these, as I started to show you in the document, um, these go through quarter by quarter. This uh, graphic on the right here is of 38th Avenue. And so 38 that shows, you know, transit improvements and where mobility hubs would be at Federal, Tejon, and Lapan, and where other local transit stops are in the in the white. So you can understand the transit network. Um, for bikes, it was uh, originally proposed that 38 might have a future <clears throat> uh, bike facility on it. And in this last round of outreach, um, we had a, a community survey where it, we asked, um, you know. Do you think bikes belong on 38th or should it be a parallel? And it was very overwhelmingly supported the a parallel facility. So that's bikes. Um, pedestrian intersection safety. So it'll highlight intersections that rose to the top as being um, problematic. So this is just one example, but all of those, back to that map, all of those maroon streets have these detailed um, diagrams and specific recommendations in the plan. Next is traffic calming. Um, so this map uh, corresponds with traffic calming recommendations. Um, these are heavily based on what we heard. Um, you know, they they are uh, based on survey responses and talking with the community and notes that we got at meetings and online surveys where there are trouble spots. We also looked at as you can see, um, you know, where are people trying to walk and, and bike to and where are those busier quarters? So we have, you know, schools and rec centers, libraries and parks um, on here as well. So you can you can see where those destinations are. Um, these are the through streets. Uh, they tend to be, you know, they connect multi neighborhoods. Um, so as I said earlier, these uh, tend to uh, because they connect multiple neighborhoods, they have higher speeds. Um, we have, uh, considering the, the dark red is to consider additional stop control. So these are long distances of, say, Pecos or Zuni or Tejon, um, where I have to walk along the street on one side for multiple blocks before there's a crossing opportunity. Um, so looking at additional stop measures and then um, traffic calming, the, the orange lines are just general um, traffic calming recommendations where um, these might include like bulb outs in the street. Um, it, these might be a combination of other recommendations. For example, if you put a protected bike lane in, it tends to slow down traffic. If there's parking, it tends to slow down traffic. Um, and there's uh, other methods that are listed in the plan, um, but generally these are the streets uh, that have those recommendations. Um, next are high comfort bike facilities. Um, so as Dottie mentioned, the near or the Northwest um, Community Transportation Quarters, uh, there is uh, you know a lot of uh, bike facility projects being implemented in this area. So this map builds on top of that. Um, so you can see where existing, this takes, you You are not going to figure out this map by looking at it for 10 seconds, so you will have to, um, you know, dig in to this uh, in more detail, but it shows the different facility types and those locations. It shows where um, proposed enhancements, so for example, Clay and 35th are both neighborhood bikeways. Um, 
uh, but we heard loud and clear from the community that they want a more protected facility or they want it to feel safer to bike along those streets. And so this is an upgrade, if you will, to so the orange, uh, the orange areas are upgrades to existing facilities. Um, the light yellow background are new streets that don't exist, don't have bike facilities today, um, but we are recommending that they be further studied to uh, complete the network based on what we heard from the community. And I just want to say uh, the Near Northwest, um, I've worked on a few of these, uh, these neighborhood plans and Y'all are bikers. <laughs> There's a lot of bike comments and you definitely want to feel safer biking in your neighborhood. So um, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, let's see what else. So build on uh, Northwest Transportation Network, identifies enhancements, new pros, uh, intersection safety. So the purple dots are the problematic intersections um, as well. Uh, along, this is the same map that you're seeing and just highlighted with the red um, circles are shared streets. Um, so we have recommended a few shared streets. There happens to be at least one in each neighborhood. Um, and these are uh, areas where the street would be designed to prioritize pedestrian mobility. Um, they, they don't preclude cars from driving on them, but they do um, they do, uh, just by their design, uh, recommend that tr cars travel generally 10 miles an hour or slower. And so this is uh, just a picture down here of an example of one um, idea about a shared street where, you know, sometimes it can be closed off and people can sit in the street and then other, other times maybe cars are driving on this surface. Um, and so those are 25th Avenue in, in Jefferson Park, which is already under design. So that's actually um, being implemented. Um, and then in Highland is uh, Central Street, uh, which is also under current design for some improvements happening there. Um, and then Platt Street, we've been meeting uh, with the businesses along Platt Street, and they really love this idea of being able to have uh, festivals in the street because there is a concentration of, of businesses there that would be interested in that sort of activity. Um, 41st Avenue, right by the 41st and Fox Station is another uh, location for a shared street. And then in Chaffee Park, uh, we are looking at... Uh, the name's not on here. Krista, can you remember, <laughs> remind me the name of that street? Yeah, Wyandotte. And Wyandotte. Anyone, if I pronounce that incorrectly. And so that's more of a, a neighborhood, like a residential street, but it is a direct connection to the 50, uh, 51st and Zuni Park. Um, and so uh, that is a, a concept to really make that more pedestrianized and more of a park-like experience. Hey, Cheney, there was a couple questions about the traffic calming. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to like answer those quickly or just more about. So the first was um, regarding the traffic calming as lowered speeds on federal part of the recommendations. That's a good question. Uh, Krista, do you know if that was a, a exact recommendation? If not, we can certainly consider that. And I'm assuming they mean uh, the posted speed limit, reducing that. Um, no, um, who was that? Less, that, uh, that was Leslie. Leslie, was, do you mean lowering it from the posted speed limit? Is that, are you? Are you asking Leslie to reword? Yeah, to uh, declare. Or yeah. you were asking Cheney, like if if that was what the question was, right? If he was, it says it. Um, just to answer, you, we don't have a, a recommendation that says um, study lowering speed limits on federal. Okay. So one Thanks. one thing I, I will add this this is Walter Scheid from from Dadi. I'm another multimodal planner planner who's working on this project. Um, a lot of the design elements that that will be incorporated along federal will help lower speeds and, and calm traffic already. Um, and then in in terms of of speed limits, I think that's that's definitely something we can consider. But 
I think overall the the most effective measure is is, is to include additional traffic calming elements that slow that physically near the roadway and slow vehicles. Um, but that's something that we can add on on top of it as well. So thank you for that feedback. Yeah, just a reminder. Uh, anything along those lines would also need to get run by CDOT. Um, so it would be a recommendation to partner with CDOT to investigate that. Okay, um, moving Thanks. on to the pedestrian priorities. So these are um, expanding sidewalks and making areas more pedestrian friendly. Um, we have mapped, um, and again, I can zoom in on this map later, but basically the, the darker lines are uh, where it's not meeting the current standards. So if you were to put in a new development, the standards, um, by the city say that any of the arterials, so Federal 38th and Spear, um, the sidewalks need to be eight feet or wider. And so we've mapped where, where are there existing eight feet and that's the lighter blue. And then where they are less than eight feet is the darker blue. So you can see we have a lot of uh, uh, substandard sidewalks along those corridors. And those are being addressed. Um, in those balanced quarter recommendations as well. Um, and then within the neighborhood streets, this also highlights where sidewalks are less than five feet. And so there's a lot of them. Although this is a very walkable, in general, this area is very walkable. There is a great street grid. Um, it's known as some of you know the more walkable neighborhoods of Denver. Um, we've highlighted in this pink area where the priorities are. So we know uh, by our analysis and, and going and looking around and hearing from the community that Chaffee Park sidewalks, um, they are what we as planners call Hollywood curbs. They're um, attached, you know, typically like three feet or less attached to like rollover curbs. So rather than in like Sunnyside and Highland where you have a tree lawn and then the sidewalk, um, which protects you from the moving cars, Chevy Park is a very different um, context because it was built in a different era. And so um, we have prioritized Chaffee Park for sidewalk improvements and expansions as a neighborhood, as well as uh, this northeast uh, corner of, of uh, Sunnyside, which has a lot of missing sidewalks. They don't even exist, especially um, closer to the station and up in the industrial area. Um, so this, uh, again, identifies the, those priority areas. It also looks at the prior, the problem intersections from a walking um, perspective. So again, those uh, came a lot from um, feedback and surveys and what we heard um, from the community, as well as data. Dottie has a pretty sophisticated intersection safety um, tool that we used as well to map these. Um, okay, on to trails. Uh, so this is showing a zoomed out version um, of Denver showing downtown uh, and the near northwest and this is uh, showing the near northwest loop as the urban trail and how it connects um, seamlessly into the 5280 loop. And um, we just want to point out this is uh, the near northwest loop is is primarily existing bike facilities. Uh, so we're not starting from scratch. There could be, you know, low hanging fruit or, um, you know, uh, quick win improvements here where we're already working with facilities in the street and maybe it just becomes a branded um, loop. Uh, it offers desired inter neighborhood con connectivity. So we heard a lot, especially from Chaffee Park because of I-70 feeling disconnected from the amenities that Sunnyside and Highland currently have. So it's trying to um, connect all of the neighborhoods to the amenities, but also look at promoting community health um, so that you could go out and have, you know, a seven mile jog if you're that type of person or a bike ride. Um, but this is just kind of zoomed out showing how it connects into the 5280 loop via the bridges, the Highland bridges. Um, trail improvements. Uh, so these are broken up into segments. So here on the top, we're looking at the Inca um, Inca Street, which has a uh, shared 
uh, shared sidewalk that's um, for bikes and pets. And so um, improvements there are Inca Street improvements, you know, adding trees and landscaping and really greening that area. We see Inca Street as an opportunity for green infrastructure, um, more trees and landscaping to soften that area against the railroad tracks and create a unique uh, multimodal experience there. Um, there's a strong desire from the community to connect under, um, so behind Mile High Comics here. Uh, so we would work with um, private property owners, but there is enough space to continue that trail under I-70 and then connect into Taffy Park. Um, also exploring the potential regional connections. So um, people were talking about even through um, Adams County and up to Clear Creek um, trail system. So that would be a longer term uh, recommendation, but it's um, it's noted and it was an idea from from the community. Um, and then we look at uh, Cuernavaca, Cuernavaca Park access. Um, so a major thing that we heard from the community is that this I-25 underpass. So once you um, continue down Inca, uh, you can go under I-25, but the underpass is dark and dirty and doesn't feel safe at all. So adding lighting and public art and really creating that as a, a safe experience to uh, head down to the Platte, uh, Platte River Trails. Um, uh, Calamit, Calamit Street improvements. So Calamit Street uh, parallels I-25 and um, just there's kind of some jogs along there. You you know you, you know the uh, because of the angle of I-25, there's like triangle parcels here uh, along there. And um, our recommendation is just to create a single singular um, you know intuitive connection along the street that connects into um, Central Street. Um, and then moving on to uh, Central and Platte Street, you can see here those shared street recommendations, um, creating a shared street from 15th to 20th along Central, and then connecting again that um, trail along the near Northwest Loop. Uh, this along 27th and then behind private property here is a desired connection that we heard a lot from the community. So to connect Zuni um, to Central and the Highland Bridges. And then Jefferson Park, um, an idea to uh, really create a, a trolley trail. So where the trolley exists, upgrading that trail um, to be uh, a little more unique and branded and part and having the trail be part of that. Um, and then another major recommendation is looking at um, the, the potential for an I-25 head bike bridge that would connect Jefferson Park over to uh, Gates Crescent Park and then eventually over into the River Mile development. And finally, I think this is the last one is transit. So um, this is really just highlighting. So in pink is the existing transit network. And then we've overlaid Denver Moves Transit recommendations in the thick underlines. So Federal Boulevard, Regional BRT, 38th, Local BRT, um, Spear Boulevard as a bus priority quarter, as well as 29th Zuni um, to 26th and 15th to go downtown. Um, and then service investment is just upgrades to uh, to Tejon Street as far as um, bus facilities go. So we do have recommendations about improving bus stop facilities. Um, the icons on here are mobility hubs, both regional. We have two regional mobility hubs at 38th and Federal and the 41st and Fox Station. These are very high ridership. They're um, they connect to a lot. They're uh, they connect to a lot of other bus lines. Um, and then we have mo local mobility hubs as well along those quarters in that um, lighter blue. And so um, these again have more detailed recommendations in the plan, but generally uh, as a system, you can see, see those on the map. Um, and finally, we do have just without a map talking about policies and programs. So these are not necessarily things that you can um, draw a line on, um, but really talking more generally about mobility improvements, um, increasing bike and ped wayfinding signage, 
um, curbside management, assessing on-street parking um, and, and loading needs. So in those busy areas to understand, you know, where on-street parking is most uh, needed versus um, where it might uh, be better used as something else. Um, incentivizing green mobility. So um, discouraging single occupancy vehicles. Um, strategies to shift travel modes, uh, partnering with other organizations for streetscape maintenance, um, especially the business quarters. We have lots of recommendations um, in both the economy se uh, section of the plan as well as um, mobility to talk about streetscape maintenance and really um, trying to improve those business districts. Um, it is desired to have a better streetscape in those areas. And then also uh, studying street closures throughout. We heard a lot about um, people wanting to wanting it to be easier to have block parties and close down the street for a weekend or a Saturday. Um, and also ideas about closing down even large areas um, of the neighborhood for events like Seclovia where, um, where people can really take over the streets. Okay. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, the mobility recommendations. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, I believe, but Grace, you can um, let us know if we need to address anything before taking a quick break, and then we'll come back and go um, subtopic by subtopic. So, Cheney, there were there were quite a few questions that came up while you were speaking, but I, I had thought maybe it would make more sense to address them as we as we went through each section, um, rather than um, that way, in case they were addressed later in the presentation. Um, and then also just as a reminder, so the discussion is gonna be mainly with steering committee members. So if you posted a question or a comment in the thing as a public member, we'll try to get to those at the end of the meeting, but we probably, we might not get to them just, just for logistics sake so that we can get through all the content in this meeting with steering committee members um, until maybe, maybe the end of the meeting. So I'm, yeah, I'm sorry if that's, why we're not responding, but I think, yeah, we could take a, a quick five minute break and then come through and work through the section by section and hopefully address a lot of those questions. So if we could all, if we could all come back here, it's 649 now, if we can come back at uh, our 650, so come back at 655. Hello, Michael Tavel. Hi, Rebecca. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Well, I think I've seen you at uh, maybe one of these meetings in person recently. Well, yeah, yeah. sort of in person. Yeah, over, over by the Safeway at the... Uh, Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yes, yes. At uh, CEC. Yeah. When I finally dragged Jeffrey to come in and make comments. So what's new? Oh, I'm living the dream. You know, still Girl, here. Girls grown up. Oh, yeah. It's a grown, grown up and moving on. Yep. Well, our kids that you met were our grandkids, and the youngest one's 14, and the oldest one's graduating from Boulder in May. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. Yeah, my daughter just finished college, and my son's busy working on his college applications, and he has a lot of, a lot of acceptances and scholarships so far, lots of choices. Yeah. Your daughter was... Uh, stranded far far away when COVID hit wasn't she was it was it yours no I mean she was no, a... that's right it wasn't yours I know who it was so 
Yeah, I'm a little concerned about the banning cars because as Jeffrey and I get less mobile, it's going to be hard if we don't have close access to our vehicles. And, and the only place I know where they ban cars is in Venice, Italy. So, yeah. Well, they're, yeah. They're, I've seen some things that suggest they may be trying to make 32nd Avenue where we live a no parking zone or a two hour parking limit zone or something, which would be interesting. They probably want us to park in our driveways. Yeah, they want us to park in our driveways. Yeah, I mean, there's the uh, multimodal acts. I mean, this, there's like a, what do they call it? A street utilization plans going on. Yeah. And we're working on one that is mostly east of uh, Zuni. Down towards uh, Shoshone? Uh, east of Zuni in Highland. Yeah, but going east towards Pecos and Tejon and Shoshone? In between Zuni and I-25. Oh, all the way down. Okay. And 38th Ave and Spear, they're doing a curbside access plan. Well, yeah. Um, and so a lot of residents want to have a limited parking except for homeowners. So, so that homeowners get a pass to park all the time and everyone else has to park two hours. There's, there's different opinions about it. Yeah. Well, the city's been reluctant to institute that in this neighborhood. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of dicey. We have a yogurt, a yogurt, a yoga studio, one block to the west of us, and one one block to the east of us. And certain times of day, it's rather uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. But you learn to plan. Mm -hmm. So you're very involved in all of this neighborhood planning. It looks like. Well, I have a, done a little bit for a, a long time. Yeah. You know, or at least since uh, 1999. Um, but no, I've never had the bandwidth to be totally all the time engaged. Mm -hmm. But, but con slight continuously in being involved. And then there are every five years I'll do, do or spearhead some kind of project. Mm -hmm. Well, being on the steering committee has been a very interesting experience for me. It's giving me stuff for the final chapters of my new book. So that's oh, good. good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Hey, Michael. I, I hey, everyone. So we're back. It's 6.55. So if you're back in the room, if you could turn your camera on. <clears throat> awesome. And we'll probably go ahead and get started just because we have kind of a lot to, to move through. Um, so I just, just wanted, so we're going to move into the discussion section of the meeting tonight and kind of, I know we have people kind of continuously joining. So as a reminder, the discussion is going to be with, with the steering committee members, but later along in this process, there's going to be opportunities for community, community to give feedback, but we're really excited that you have taken an interest and in that you guys are all here tonight. It's, it's exciting to see so many people showing an interest. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, I'm excited to have so many steering committee members here tonight. Um, I look, you all bring such a unique lens um, for looking at these recommendations. And I'm excited to hear from you what you have to, I'm excited for you guys to share those perspectives, both with us as the planning committee and with each other. Um, and so the goal of the discussion tonight is to allow the planning team to answer any questions you have about the mobility section. Um, and to provide the team with some preliminary feedback so they can improve the draft plan before it's made public. So we're gonna go through eight sections from the mobility portion of the plan tonight, and it's probably gonna feel quick, but you will also have two weeks after this meeting to continue to share your feedback um, in Confeo. So we're trying to get you to feed, share feedback there by February 7th. Um, and then you'll also have a chance to provide more feedback when the draft plan is released to the public. So for each section, we're going to do a quick survey on kind of how well we, you guys feel that section addressed the needs of the neighborhoods. And this is kind of just to help the team gauge which sections might need more attention than others. Um, and then we'll fo have follow up questions to hear ideas about how each section can be improved. Um, and so to help us kind of better hear one another and to make sure we capture everyone's input, 
um, try to use the, you guys have already done a great job of this, of using the raise hand function um, and also using the comment function too. So we'll kind of start by kind of going back through the slides that Cheney, Cheney showed us, um, starting with kind of the balanced corridor section. This is kind of the first section of the plan that kind of goes into recommendations. And so the first thing we'll do is we're going to kind of pull a survey up. And this survey is for the steering committee members because they were able to review um, the draft, the section of the draft plan. And so based on what you guys read and reviewed um, of the balance corridor section, and this was kind of where a lot of the different ideas came together. Um, we want to know how strongly you kind of agree with the statement, the recommendations in the section adequately capture and address the most relevant issues in the neighborhood. And this is just kind of giving us a gauge. So we'll give you a minute or a couple of minutes to answer that question before we kind of go into more detail. Give it like five more seconds before I close it and then I'll share the results. I think so. Okay. So Sung, you shared it with the group. Sorry, I see it the whole time. So I think the whole group oh, can see oh, it yeah. now. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> That's true. Okay. Um, so it looks like the you know the slight majority of folks seem to be in the somewhat agree category. Um, but then we have quite a few answers dispersed a little bit around the other ones. Um, so this kind of just gives us a little bit temper to gauge. So what we want to do as we go through these discussions is we want to hear from the steering committee members about. Maybe first we can start with what gaps are missing. So when you looked through the balanced corridor section, um, were there things that you noted that were missing from the section that you thought should have been included? Okay, I'm not. And um, and if it helps to pull up anything that we've reviewed so far, so you can see it better, let me know. Yeah, um, I'm monitoring like a map. Sorry, Grace. Um, I was just monitoring the chat. Um, Troopty just kind of chimed in here and uh, just giving her an opportunity to elaborate if she like. On you know, she said, "I find these somewhat difficult in general." Um, feel free to speak up and um, kind of speak to that comment if it's specific to the balance corridor. And I think Lexi also has her hand up. Yeah, and, and so thank you. It's not for the balance corridor. It's kind of all of them. Like, um, and, and this is for me. I mean, I flipped through this just earlier today to just get an idea of what was included. You know, so I didn't even make any comment yet because I just wanted to see the entirety of it. And now, you know, we'll go through this. You guys are going through this. I don't think I have an opinion on a lot of stuff. You know, right away on some of the questions you ask, some things that pop out. You know, I will, re you know, react to. Um, when we get to that section, but I find these questions difficult and I may just answer, you know, neither agree or disagree because otherwise I'm not being, you know, I'm not reflecting this properly. No, thank you for sharing that. You find the ranking questions kind of kind of difficult to kind of take all in. It's, it's easier for you to put comments in the in the document. Yes. No, I think we just are wanting to kind of gauge to know like if there's somewhere we're really off or somewhere that, you know, like needs more work. But I but I understand that 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 feedback for sure. So I'm not hearing anyone speak to kind of the gaps. Are there any other thoughts on ways that kind of this balance corridor section could be improved? I know, Rebecca, I heard you kind of speaking to the cars um, about cars a little bit. Did you want to elaborate any thoughts you were having on that? I, I guess uh, as a differently abled and elder person, um, I do uh, worry a little bit that 
that's not going to be taken into consideration that, you know, no off street parking. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering how do the needs of differently abled people and elders get taken into account as you're thinking about widening sidewalks, putting in more bike lanes. Did maybe somebody uh, from the planning team could speak to that? Well, I'll just say, I mean, it's a recommendation to reduce the amount of single occupancy trips. It doesn't say that you can't get in your car and drive somewhere in the neighborhood. And as far as um, accessibility goes, I mean, our recommendations are to widen sidewalks so that a wheelchair or, um, you know, able any um, person uh, that is not able-bodied um, can walk or have help walking um, or rolling along the streets. So I'm, um, I don't know if that answered your question or Krista can pop in. Um, it, it did not because, you know, a wide sidewalk doesn't get me to the grocery store and back again, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we were making a bunch of recommendations, um, maintaining, I think that last block access for everybody's residential homes is obviously something that um, we took in consideration. And um, we took a look at shared streets and areas where it was commercial and in two areas where there was um, connections to parks, one which is between um, 41st and Fox, which is a major transit um, area. But in general, we were looking to balance the needs of everyone um, in a slightly different way than we have in the past. Um, and that includes increasing transit access for those who can't drive. Um, so that would be, you know, differently abled and elderly and children and, people without driver's license and people who can't afford a car. Um, and so increasing the ability of everyone to get around um, and some people use vehicles and some people don't. Um, and so we were working towards, again, we call them balanced corridors, working towards creating that balance to meet the needs of even more people. And one thing I, I would add to that is, is for any, any sort of shared streets, there would still be uh, local access to your to your home or something like that uh, in your in your vehicle, um, but it's really just designed to discourage any sort of through traffic. So people are who are driving through the neighborhood from from trying to go on a single road for several miles or something and not actually just going back to their house. Um, designed to encourage or discourage that sort of travel on on a shared street, whereas there's still localized access. Yeah, thanks, Walter. Uh, absolutely. And those two that are in residential areas are ones that dead end at the parks. Um, so they are not through streets. Um, so we're working to maintain, I guess, connectivity overall in the street grid as well. Thank you guys for speaking to that. Um, I think we'll take maybe maybe one or two more comments in this area before we move into the next section. Sorry, I'm, we just wanna make sure we get through all of it. So um, I see that Grace, em sorry. Emily, can you, yes. Can you hear me? Can you see yes. the document um, on the screen or are you seeing the presentation? I see the document on the screen. Okay, good. I just wanna make sure that my screen is reflecting what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, okay. So can Grace, you guys see and so Emily's hand seat? Yeah, so do you want to start? I'll start. We'll start with Emily and then Trupti. I did have, and tell me if I'm um, in the wrong comment section, but about uh, the proposed um, corridor in Chafee Park being mainly residential, I guess I'm curious. Um, the kind of one that we would close off to the street um, or, or not fully close off to traffic, but like designate as like a more pedestrian focused area. I think it was Wyandotte that ends. I think it's great that like there is a circle there that ends right at the, at the park and that's really awesome. But I think that maybe looking at or focusing on Zunai being that option or even, um, I don't know what street is on the east side of the park 
but it has an entire length of the park as its um, western edge. And just thinking about the streets that are directly next to the park might be more ideal for that as opposed to a fully residential street that just ends, Vallejo, thanks Nola, um, that just ends at the park. You might get better feedback from residents um, like who live on that block. Um, I'm just thinking, why, yeah, there it is right there. So the, the circle. So yeah, either Vallejo or Zunai. I, I just, um, that's my only, my only thought about the thing that popped up in my head about that was considering uh, you have, might have more just engagement and activity on the street if it directly um, is next to the park as opposed to one that is predominantly not next to the park, unless it was solely to focus on that little circle at the end. Great, no, thank you, Emily, for that feedback. Um, Troop D, did you want to chime in for something for the shared or for the balanced corridors before we move on to the next section? It's kind of an overall, and part of it is shared streets, and the other part is disability parking. And I've had a resident who's wheelchair bound in the neighborhood comment to me that he finds it very difficult within Low High as well as Sunnyside that there aren't any parking you know, for, for him. So he's, um, I, I think Amanda, you might know him. I think he helped with something um, at our park as well. Matt, his name is. But what I haven't seen, and I'm trying to get maybe his information is how much disabled parking exists that supports all of the business corridors it, within low high, could be West, you know, could be high, well, could be Highlands too. But, um, so I think it's a more generic question, but is that something that was looked at when we talk about mobility and accessibility is where do folks park who have to take a car to get somewhere when it's just not you know down the street where they can just take their wheelchair. So, and on the shared street, there's a project kicking off with CPD right now where they're looking at their, I forget the name of the consulting company and a work group where they're gonna be exploring this kind of making the temporary outdoor spaces but they're calling it shared streets, if I recall. Are these two things also working or you know, going off of one another or how, how is that working? Just because I don't know if we come up with a different set of guidelines here in NPI versus what that project team comes up with polling the city on the same thing. Thank you. I can quickly address that. Thanks, Sun. Uh, the la last part of the question. Um, so the the yeah expanded outdoor dining. Uh, they're def they're looking specifically at the standards and procedures to kind of set it in place so that that process is a little bit more predictable for business owners. Um, and I believe Dottie even has their own kind of um, kind of project right now looking at share street opportunity areas throughout the city. Um, so we went you know you know reinvent the wheel in that sense in terms of the the uh, coming with the right standards. I think it's just trying to identify the specific locations um, kind of within this MPI area where we've heard the desire for those kind of um, amenities or, or street types in the neighborhood. Yeah, and Tripti, yeah. I'm on that focus, um, that task force, so I can serve as a liaison between the, it's called the Outdoor Places Program and um, this plan. I think we should, move on to the the next section of the plan just to make sure we're, we are able to to cover everything and i know i i appreciate all your feedback about you know we're we're learn this is a learning process um a part of our thought with doing the survey questions is to allow kind of more quiet people to also give input in a, in a in a way um because may, it maybe that works better for some of it if if we're continuing to hear We'll revise as we move forward through like next stages of the plan. But for for today, we're going to do the survey through kind of throughout to see see how it goes. Um, and I think other sections are kind of less broad, so maybe more, maybe work a little better with the survey. But we'll we'll see. we'll give it a try for today. Um, so now we're looking into the traffic calming section. Um, and if you had any clarifying questions, I know there were a couple questions in the chat um, about the traffic calming. I believe um from i know yeah. it's like kind of yeah i could i could uh, uh bring those up um and read them out loud um and if i miss something from the steering committee related to traffic calming feel free to jump in 
Um, so yeah, Leslie had one about um, are we lowering speeds on federal as part of recommendations? Um, if Walter addressed that, then we could look into that idea. Um, then Trupti had one, it says, uh, does Dottie have results of traffic circles where they've been installed a couple years ago? Um, so maybe Walter, if, if you're able to answer um, that one, that would be great or a follow up if we don't know. Yet. Yeah, yeah, thanks so. So Dottie's currently conducting a study um, to look at the effectiveness of a variety of, of different roadway treatments related to, to neighborhood bikeways. So that includes traffic circles, chicanes, uh, bulb outs at intersections, that sort of thing. And just, just seeing if they're functioning as designed. A lot of these design elements are relatively new for, for the city. So going back through and, and doing a lot of data collection before the installation of these elements, and then after installation of, of these elements to see if they're reducing speeds, uh, slowing turning uh, speeds, that sort of thing. Um, reducing vehicle volume, so like the number of vehicles traveling along the corridor, that sort of thing. So that study is ongoing right now. Um, it'll be completed, I believe, by, by this coming summer. And then those results will be pulled into our bikeway designs uh, going forward. So really looking to, to learn and, and, and build upon uh, what we've installed and, and do continual improvement to improve all those elements as well. Thank you. Walter for speaking to that. Um, so for the, the poll, we have about, it looks like 11 people. If you wanna answer quickly before we close that out and get some additional comments on the traffic calming section. I just share the results. Great, thanks, Sung. So, yeah, let, if you could let me know, I get to tell, to tell us sometimes. Or I can see where it says stop sharing. So it looks like maybe there were more folks kind of high, a little higher rating on this with a lot of people in the somewhat agree, kind of neither agree, disagree. So as we think about the traffic calming section, were there from the steering committee members, were there ways in which you saw that could that section could be improved or questions you had for clarification? Um, I see Tripti has her. Tripti has your hand up. Yeah, so I was thinking about Tejon. I know I see for Tejon, we're looking at the 41st section um, area, so a smaller. Why not extend it? Because we've got a park up there, Chaffee, and the people are flying all the way through to the uh, to the stop at 46 for the most part. So if we're talking about some of the traffic calming. Wouldn't it make sense to begin it, you know, where we've got some business and then the park to where the stop sign actually is. So um, I, was just, I just thought that maybe that needed to be extended um, if we're talking about traffic calming. Would, would you mind uh, switching to the recommendation map for a second? Sorry, Tripti, would you mind saying the intersection range you're talking about again? So this uh, Tejon specifically, right now we've got it from 38th to 41st. 41st and Tejon has, you know, um, a, a retail and shopping coffee shop. But the thing is that people fly past that all the way to 47, I'm sorry, 46, where they're gonna make a right, go on, you know, to I-70. Um, so that, that entire corridor has, tra you know, speed issues in general. And I know I, we've got somebody else who lives on that block across from the park. They see it, they've got kids, but the issue isn't only from 38 to 41st. It's just as much all the way to 46. Um, absolutely. Uh, we actually have traffic coming recommended all the way from, I think it's 30th to 46th. Okay, and great. then that 38th to, I believe 41st, um, sorry, it went away. Um, but that darker red is kind of a, an extra infinite emphasis okay. um, recommending additional stop control, but we have the entire corridor. Actually, I, I misspoke. I said 46. It's the whole thing. <laughs> okay. All the way up to 52nd. We have the whole thing um, highlighted right now because we got so much feedback on the difficulty of crossing Tejon. Um, 
And there's so much pedestrian activity that commercial is really interspersed at little junctures along the corridor. Um, so frankly, it was easier to highlight the corridor than start playing, you know, highlight little segments. Um, and again, we have that part of the playground and the school. So um, absolutely. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thanks. Are there any more comments on on the traffic calming before we move to the to the high comfort bike? Do you curious? Uh, this might be ahead, a little Ramon. bit from the traffic calming. Uh, and the bike lanes, like I know on uh, 41st, it, you know, they put in sort of this circular obstruction that you have to go around. Is that part of that effort? It, it, for the traffic calming and sort of the bike lanes, is that what the solution is? And I asked that question, you know, with, with uh, Troop D asking about Tihon, um, I don't personally, uh, it, to go, there's not enough turning radius to go around there, especially in the snow, you end up sliding into the gutter if you don't have a four wheel drive. And I'm just curious, you know, how, 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 how much will that will continue as being a, a proposed solution to slow things down? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the thanks. feedback on that. Um, and I, I know there, there's been some other comments on that specific traffic circle that was just recently installed. So um, I think there's there's more to come in terms of in improving that specific design, but in terms of traffic circles in general, they're they're typically used today along neighborhood bikeways at at intersections to um, slow vehicle slow vehicle traffic, and also try to make the the uh, interaction between vehicles and, and bicyclists a little bit safer at those intersections. So again, that's an example of of one of those intersection elements that that the city is has recently started in, to install and we're looking to continue to improve them so really appreciate the feedback on on that in terms of it, it not working as intended and and yeah more to come in terms of, of the design for those moving forward okay so that so it's a it's a is it a test now or is it uh they're still working on refining the solution just curious. Hey, hey Ramon, Ramon, if you go into the chat and you go to the community transportation network that Gina put in there, you can find the 41st Avenue bike lane and you can go corridor by corridor and see. So that's going to stay. That's there to stay. And that's built out by the community transportation network. I can put it again, but Tihon's on there, Clay's on there. All of them are on there. So use that that link and you can follow what's happening because like 46th Avenue is going to change in my neighborhood. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Councilwoman. And I would also add uh, on that on that website that, that was just put in uh, the chat, there's also the, there's a link to or an email address that you can talk to the project team specifically about those corridors. So I, I'm not involved with the day-to-day -day on those specific corridors, but the, the, you can reach out to the project team and they can answer additional questions. So they, they'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Thanks. I know we have a couple more hands raised. We also have quite a few sections that we haven't gotten to yet. Um, we can, Emily, I see that you have your hand raised. You could quickly do yours before we, we move yeah. on to the next section. Um, for Chafee Park specifically, I guess, um, was it considered at all to narrow all of the streets by increasing the width of the sidewalk to reduce traffic speeds? I, I'm very quickly going through it and I don't see like kind of an over like overlay of a suggestion of widening the sidewalks to then narrow the streets. Um, our streets are super wide up here and it allows for a lot of higher speeds. Um, I guess I just want to make that ask that question slash make that recommendation. Um, we also need better sidewalks because they are really narrow. Yeah, we didn't get into, I guess, which traffic calming measure would be appropriate for which street at this level. Um, that's generally what happens next, kind of in the study engineering phase. Um, it can involve, I guess, water flow, street widths. So it really does start getting into the nitty gritty about what's appropriate and what each, in each place. Uh, one particular street that we did take a look at in a little bit 
more detail um because we had that map earlier that talked about priority sidewalks and Chaffee Park being a huge area for priority sidewalks. So that particular idea has been captured. Um, but in a little bit more fine grained is 50th Avenue in our, I think it's in the bikeway section, I apologize, or in the neighborhood section um, where it got moved around, uh, is the idea to investigate using 50th Avenue widening sidewalks um, and putting in shared use paths. And so that would potentially do what you're talking about. But other than that, the, the precise techniques of, of like which traffic calming measure we're gonna put on which street would be like the next phase. But if there's any other locations you want us to take a look at um, as far as where to draw attention to, um, love to hear it. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emily. And, and I I, I, we're going to move on to the next section just so that we make sure we kind of are able to touch on everything here, but please continue to share your comments in the conveyo after, you know, after the meeting, because um, we, we definitely want to hear them. So we're going to move on to the high comfort bikeway. Um, and so if you can kind of give us your survey response quickly so we can, we want to talk to you. So yeah, if you could give us that just to give us a temperature check and then we'll get into the discussion. And I know we had some new folks joining us. So I just wanted to remind members of the public that, you know, with this, this meeting is mainly going, the discussion is going to be with the steering committee. Um, and if you have comments, you can put them in the chat and we'll try our best uh, to respond to them that way. Um, but the discussion is gonna primarily be with steering committee members just to keep us kind of more on schedule. Okay. All right, if you want to, if you wanted to respond at, try to. I just shared the survey. Okay, great. So yeah, this one looks like we have kind of more, more, um, more discussion to have. It looks like we have more in the kind of neither disagree or somewhat disagree section. So maybe someone who's indicated that they somewhat disagree. If you guys could, if maybe one of the steering committee members, if that was your response, you could share what you felt like the section was missing what what or what needed to be improved lexi you have your hand raised yeah um so it's not actually on this particular map and I'm, maybe i'm just uh, confused but um if you go down i think it's i'm trying to go back and forth i think it's two slides down um with uh rec uh, m5 um oh it's probably not on here because it's in the i'm in the actual document anyway it if you look at M5 recommendation, it, it talks about under B, um, basically saying repurposing roadway space um, from vehicles to bicycles by converting some local roads from two way to one way, um, study that. And then it has like four different sections of streets, which includes Alcott and Beach, Bryant between 32nd, 48th, Wyandotte Vallejo between 32nd, 48th, Shoshone and Quivis between 32nd, 44th and 39th and 37th avenues, which we had talked about previously. I guess my question is on those, I mean, we were just looking at the previous balanced quarter map and it's talking about like, for example, Zunai as maybe converting it to be uh, a one-way bike lane going south and then having Pecos be the one-way bike lane going north. Um, and, and then I guess I just don't understand why we would have something parallel to it proposed on an Alcott beach or a, like Shoshone Quivis that's so close to Pecos and so close to Zunai. So I don't know if I'm not understanding the difference between a balanced corridor and a specific bikeway, these high comfort bikeways, but I just had, uh, was confused by that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lex. Oh, sorry, Grace. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Christy. Krista. And it's not even shown on this map. So that's where I was a little bit like, am I reading something outside of that? Um, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, so some of our recommendations do have, I guess, more specific geographies attached to them. And those got put on this map. That idea is more, I guess, you could call it like a policy recommend, not like, not a full policy, but it's an idea of a study for an actually studying like this new, I guess, facility type. And it would, it, this is totally new idea. And 
uh, it would be a long road. Um, but basically, we have a lot of studies recommended on that map. Um, and what is going to turn out to be feasible in certain locations, you know, may or may not come to pass exactly as the map. Um, and so this is more of like a backup recommendation. Um, we also have a lot of facilities recommended on more of our collector streets, which are higher volume streets, but they do give us a route to get over our big barriers like I-70. Um, so that's how Zuni and Pecos got selected. And we had a lot of people that spoke about wanting to be able to bike ride with their kids um, and feeling uncomfortable in higher volume roadways. And so it's just another opportunity to take a look at our neighborhood network um, and take a look at some lower volume streets. But we have right of way width constraints that prevent a lot of choices, I guess, um, that would normally be on the menu. And so that recommendation was an opportunity to have Dottie just take a study and take a look and see if this was an idea that would work or not. Okay, thanks for explaining. And then I'll just jump in. I'm just reviewing the chat to see if anything related to bike lanes. Um, Renee had one a while back. I said, why are bike lanes put on streets with more traffic than less? For example, 46 versus uh, 44th. Yes. So um, again, we took a look at what's going to get us across our major barriers. Also, what aligned with existing traffic signals. Um, so some of our streets, and I'm not going to speak to exactly 46 to 44th, but um, some of our streets are misaligned. And so you would need to ride on the sidewalk, for example, to get across 38th. And uh, it limited a lot of the corridors that we could take a look at as far as like a continuous alignment. And so that was kind of the structure that we took a lot of look at again, what, what can get us across major barriers, what has a traffic signal um, that can help us get across our major arterials and what roadways have a straight alignment um, so that our bicycles are not constantly jogging. Um, and also we have the complete streets um, design guidelines and right of way widths that kind of led to where we ended up. But again, I'm open ears for, for all feedback. Well, I, I have questions and actually comments on the same thing about the 46 uh, corridor. And I, I understand what you're saying about the jogs and such that are happening over there. Um, I, I think my concern is that the bridge over from 47th is going to dump more traffic over into that area, folks trying to get over to uh, I-70. But for folks who want to just go to Tennyson, they're jumping on 46. We also recognize that 46 is going to have to be utilized unless we change some structure on 47th that doesn't allow a left turn off of the uh, off of uh, going southbound on Pecos to get to the bridge to take you back to Globeville. So, you know, is 40, did we pick 46 without really evaluating whether traffic on 46 may substantially change because of the bike? And maybe this is far enough away and we're just gonna reevaluate it, but isn't that a concern? You know, or please tell me how I'm completely off base that that's not going to happen. How is 46 not going to become a little bit more used to go east to west for folks going from something like Globeville over to Tennyson or Sheridan? Why would you jump on 70 if you can go this way possibly? So how will we how are we accounting for having chosen 46 as our east west with this bridge? Thank you. Um, if I could, this no. is Renee. I mean, I think that was really my concern as well is given that this is a really long range plan that some of the changes we're thinking about, which Chupti absolutely summarized really well, you know, DHA residents, there's many residents that rely upon bikes um, for kids to get to school or for jolts to get to work or to stops. And so just trying to think long term. Um, in some cases, is that, you know, is that main street where you have a certainly where you need to cross a main a major arterial 
it makes sense, but is it, is it the safest because cars are going a little faster and there's more cars? It was, it was just a question balancing, I guess, the different volumes and future connections. And to add to that, I'm not, you know, I just mentioned Globeville and the bridge. We also have Quig Newton that will actually double, triple, quadruple in size. And we probably have thousands of more units over by light rail. And, and so that my concern is how, how safe will 46 be unless we're really thinking about making it a one way and giving half of that what's currently there to bike and pedestrian. Thank you. So I'm going to jump in just for a second to show um, these are some of the drawings uh, for 46 and Walter can speak more to this, but 46 is currently undergoing um, or maybe is uh, already implemented or will be by 23 some improvements to the bike facilities. Um, also, it connects we have, you know, if you zoom out of the neighborhood it uh, let me just go to Google Earth. 46 is a major connection to uh, the Rocky Mountain and Berkeley Lake parks and 46 west of federal is a historic parkway. And so um, the team was really looking at a continuing the, the Northwest Transportation Solutions project, um, as well as looking at 46 that you'll find in other parts of the plan, a bigger idea to continue um, the parkway feel. So really looking at expanding tree canopy and making it a, a much more comfortable um, street and different street section than it is today. Will that go Thanks. all the way into Sunnyside though? Or are we just gonna make it perfect on west of Federal? And then when we get to Quig Newton, it's not looking so good anymore. So the CTN project currently does end at Federal. And our um, recommendations in this plan are designed to try and create continuity um, and enhance the existing bike lane that's already there. Um, and when you take a look at the plan, you can take a look at the segments that we've recommended. And if you want to tell us you have different um, like picturing about which segments and how far and what, um, I think it'd be a good, good spot to write it down um, when we kind of get in the weeds about that like specific corridor. Thanks for speaking to that, Krista. I think we should probably move in to the pedestrian priority section just so we make sure we talk about that. And as we move forward, please, yeah, we're excited about all the feedback you're giving us. But yeah, I know we're gonna, I just to make sure we have time to touch on everything at the meeting today. So we're moving into the PED priorities and we'll do quickly do the survey um, just to get your overall sense of how you felt these met the needs of the community. And then we'll kind of, as we did before, touch on, um, touch on what, what, what's missing and what needs to be improved. Renee, is your hand still up from before? Or, oh, you have a new comment, sorry. <laughs> Grace, this <clears throat> Yeah, um, and you shared the screen. Okay, so we kind of seem to be distributed a little bit all over the place with this one, with quite a few people in the somewhat agree. Um, we'll just move straight into the discussion. I noticed uh, Tim, I think, had his hand up. And then um, Councilwoman Sandoval also had her hand up. So we'll do Tim and then, then Councilwoman. Yeah, just, just a quick one on this. Um, there's discussion strategy C2 on page 112 that says, widen sidewalks on collectors to six feet. As someone who lives on a collector, if you come and mess up my five foot stone sidewalk and put a six foot sidewalk in instead and take my tree down, I'm not gonna be very happy. So I think that's a really bad idea and uh, just wanted to go on record to say, don't, don't do things that are you know, for one foot of sidewalk, it's not worth it. Um, so that's all. No, thank you, Tim, for sharing your feedback. Councilwoman Sandoval, did you want want to speak to something for this section? Yeah, I'm wondering why 
to get from Sunnyside to Chappy Park, there's federal and Pecos. That's a huge swath of land to be able to have improvements. That's why isn't Zunai? Um, that's two touch points to cross. And Pecos has a huge um, pedestrian from bridge that's over CDOT. Is Zunai on there? Like this map. Okay, so it is on that that one. Okay, so it just wasn't on the one that you were showing. Okay. No, I'm glad we were able to clarify that. Um, Renee, I see you have your hand out. Yeah, I do. And I'll totally confess I have not looked at the at the document. So I'm still gonna do that. But I have a question about the pink area, the priority area zone, and I put this question in the chat is um, it's one thing to identify that area, but in some cases that can really trip up homeowners who are trying to make additions to their home or renovations. And because it could flag reviewers to say, um, you need to upgrade your sidewalks. And, and does, the, does the plan um, identify like to what standard and because those could be some unintended consequences possibly for homeowners to have to fix. Yeah, thank, thank so, you for that, for that feedback. And, and I, I would say um, this prioritization is, is primarily focused on sidewalk improvements that, that the city would do. So I don't, I don't think it would, it would put homeowners in a situation where we'd be requiring them to pay additional money on top of, of an ADU improvement or some other improvement that they're already completing to, to pay for that themselves. So, and also the, I think the, the sidewalk, the conversation on sidewalks is also pretty rapidly evolving with ordinance 307 being passed recently, which was the um, sidewalk ordinance around uh, finding different and new funding mechanisms for, for sidewalks. So it's something that, that Dottie's working through currently and, and um, I would say just just more to come there, but I, I appreciate you bringing up that concern, Renee, and we can we can make sure that's more specific in, in the recommendations. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful because I think <laughs> there's reviewers who interpret it um, definitely the, that it's not compliant. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Um, Councilwoman, is your hand up just from before? No, you have, a, you have a new comment? Or no, it's just up for form. Okay. Um, and so do we have any more feedback on the pedestrian priorities section? Um, did you, we had a question that we had you consider before this meeting about whether we felt the recommendations for new bike and pedestrian crossing adequately addressed the community concerns about major barriers and highways that divide the neighborhoods. Does anyone want to speak to that? I have, a, <clears throat> I have a comment about it. On this map that you're showing here, where you were taking uh, Inca uh, back, where you were taking Inca north underneath I-70, it's just another north-south uh, corridor. And it's just, it was on the previous map where it's in the green. Thanks, Pete. We'll, we'll take right a there. look at that. And, you know, just to be fair with everyone um, about the rule of, you know, limiting the discussions of student members, feel free to utilize the chat function to point those out. But ju just okay. because of limited time, let's, uh, we'll try to limit discussion to the student members. Okay. Just throwing that out. Yep. That it's a good north south corridor that doesn't, won't take a lot. To, uh, to change over because it's already an underpass under I-70. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, did anyone want to speak to the barriers from I-70 before we move to the next question, if they feel the recommendations adequately address those barriers? I don't have a barrier one, but, but just uh, a mention ahead, about but the bike lanes of you know trying to do them on when you do them on on two sites for example on Zunai 
close to 52nd there, it gets pretty narrow for two cars to go through. Um, and it's like the, the, the way the bike lane was made, you, you're not driving in a, an area where you, you have to go around. You can't like drive in, in a protected cone area. Not quite sure why it was done that way, but um, just something to think about. Makes it honestly. Thank, thank you, Ramon. Turk, do you, did you have a comment we'd like to share? Yes, on that clay future connection, exact location TBD, I guess what I really want to know is, um, are we thinking this is going to be multimodal or bike pedestrian? I hear, I've heard bike pedestrian. I wouldn't want recommendations to go in there without actually spelling that out and giving the option of doing more vehicular bridges. But I don't know, you know what the big plan is or I don't know what I don't know. So what's the plan over there? Because I've noticed that the CTN work is now extended clay further up than 46, which makes sense. Is this plan to be pedestrian and bike? The current recommendation is for a bike um, and pedestrian bridge. And um, the recommendation is worded, it's, it's pulled from um, a parks and trails plan. And currently the recommendation is worry, uh, worded such to consider either clay or Tejon, um, depending as the community evolves where there's greater need. So I guess my only ask would be, can we be clear in what gets on these draft recommendations to include that this is being taken from those places where the recommendation is bike and ped? Thank you. No, thank you, Tripti. I think we should probably move to the next section just to, to try and get through everything. Yeah, so we're moving into trails. So we'll quickly do the survey and then feel free to go ahead and if you have thoughts to put your hand up about ideas you had in, in this section. All right, so it looks like kind of spread out, but more with the kind of towards the agreeing side. Um, would anyone want to share what they feel like might be missing from this section? Um, also, any thoughts you have about the near Northwest connectivity loop? Um, we'd love to hear your feedback from the trail section. Or if you're someone who rated lower, maybe what you felt was missing or what could be improved. Nola, you have your hand up. Hi, yeah. I don't know if you can go to a map that just shows where it is in Chaffee Park a little bit closer. It's a, it's a little bit confusing. And it, it seems like it's going kind of down 48th, um, which, you know, east of Pecos, which is is very industrial. Um, I ride my bike on 48th that way a lot, and it's, you know, there's glass everywhere, there's semi trucks, like it's not pleasant. So I'm just wondering, like, does that mean there's going to be improvements to those, to that route? Um, because to be honest, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't take it unless it was nice, especially if I was walking. Um, I, you know, cause I guess it depends what your destination is, but um, I like the idea of a new kind of outlet. Uh, I, I guess I'm just wondering like, what's the, what, what actually, what would the actual improvements be to create a trail? Yeah, so so you're right. Um, be, with the industrial um, land use here, that there are a lot of of tra uh, truck traffic. Um, but because of the industrial land use, we saw an opportunity, and the recommendation is actually to 
have an off street trail. So it would be a shared path um, within the right of way here uh, that goes uh, on, on this side of the street. So it wouldn't be in the street mixed with semi trucks, it would be off street. And where does it go? Don't... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, where does it go um, west then? Where's is it up north of the stable so, lot and everything? Or 50th? Yeah. So oh, 50th. And I think okay. 50th. Um, and that's that's called out as a future um, connection in the um, Northwest Transportation Project. Nola, was were you was your comment about going under I seventy related to the trails too? And and if so, did you want to speak to that? From um, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm just kind of think uh, thinking about it. I'd be curious other Chappy Parkers, but I I don't know it. Like I would probably take a different route than that. Um, there's just a lot less residential over there. So I, I worry it would be a lot less used, but but like I said before, I like the idea of kind of like a new route, um, but just going through industrial, I think you just, or having it be kind of surrounded by industrial, you, you, you lose a lot of potential users. Yeah. Thank you, Nola, for that, for that feedback. Um, Tripti, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, recollecting looking at this map earlier today on that platform, that comedy platform. I thought there was a circle, and I can't tell the legend, but it, I think it's a connection or an overpass, underpass. I thought there was a circle in that map on the platform right above the 47th Avenue Bridge. Was that, is this more current or I, I don't know, was that ever on there? Like an improved overpass underpass seemed like it was right above that 47. And I, I, I didn't know, but I recall questioning, wow, is that a new thing we're doing? So is that? Um, the improvements related to this Inca Trail recommendation, and you're absolutely right, Troop D, that circle uh, is was there okay. um, and would be on future versions of this image. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. I think we should probably move forward to the transit section just to make sure we cover that before we, we end our meeting tonight. And so we'll do the survey quickly um, and then also just sort of touch on like, as we have been, just what gaps we have, what are, what's missing and how we can improve. I just shared it, Grace. Okay, great. So looks kind of like we have a lot of people kind of middle of the road on this, which definitely means we have room for improvement. So if you kind of put that neither agree or disagree thought, um, what were you feeling like this was missing or what kind of made you feel kind of in the middle of the road about it and what could make this section stronger? Councilwoman Sandoval. So the, what's frustrating for me and always has been is there's no east-west connection. Why aren't we making a recommendation to connect to Globeville? Why does everything have to go down to the central business district? So um, that's just, I feel like 
Chaffee Park, there should be a bus over 48th Avenue. Um, so that's just my comment. No, thank you, Councilman, for that feedback. Did anyone else have thoughts on like what recommendations they felt like it was missing or how this section could be improved? Let's see. We'll do Tripti then Emily. Do we? Do you have? Can you um, give us a little bit more information on the local BRT versus the regional, in terms of for me at least for 38th? Where's the start? You know, the beginning and the end on that. What are we thinking? Is it going from Fox to Federal Sheridan? I, I assume Sheridan for something like a BRT. So. If you can just kind of clarify the, the 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 start and end points for those, and the other part is, is this really going to happen? I mean, we we talk about BRT, and then it kind of gets dumbed down to not actually happening, like it needs to happen. So I'm just curious whether these recommendations are, are just wishful thinking or you know real possibilities. Thank you. So I, I would say for, for local versus, versus regional, I can't speak specifically to the bounds of, of 38th, but I'm, I'm looking to pull up um, the DOTI Transit team's website, which I'll, I'll put in the chat, which, which has a little bit more in terms of uh, Denver Moves Transit uh, 2.0, which is the most recent plan, which is actually programming out over the next uh, 20 to or so years. Um, all of the all the different BRTs and prioritizing them and, and that sort of thing, and then also discussing uh, more immediate improvements that can happen in the next uh, four to five years in terms of um, reliability, speed, and reliability improvement and that sort of thing as we work towards and, and develop additional funding to actually implement BRT. So I'll share that in in the uh, in the chat here in a second. Um, but I would say anything on here that's a local. BRT is most likely within the bounds of, of the city and county of Denver, uh, whereas regional would, would go uh, further beyond the bounds of, of the city and county itself. And thanks for clarifying, Walter. And thanks for your comment, Tripti. You. Emily, would you like to share your comment on the transit? Yeah, I didn't see, and I could have missed it, but anything about, I know we talked a lot about um, like, kind of looking at where the old trolley cars used to run and where those like hubs of locations are and that they were connected to where those trolley stops were. Did that make it into anything around the current like bus orientation or suggested bus routes um, instead of just sort of going off of what's there? Like, cause those existed for a, re a reason and we still have, you know, centers that of like more, I guess, business areas that are connected to where those stops used to be. Um, I just didn't see that in the final or in this draft. Um, yeah, that's a great someone question. from, go ahead. We do have it mapped. We have the old trolley routes mapped and we're constantly toggling on and off that layer to pay attention to those. But um, I'm not sure. I know we talked about it like being my uh, possibility for micro transit or bringing back sort of a local localized transit, um, but I apologize. I don't remember. Krista, do you know if that did, if that made it into the draft recommendations? I'm assuming not if she's, if Emily's commenting on it. Circulators, yes, Trippy. Yeah, no, we didn't um, recommend bus route alignments. Um, we were working pretty closely with the Denver Moves Transit 2 team and um, they've been taking a strong look at what's feasible, um, especially with us being a part of um, the greater system. And so we were basically, we worked with Denver, uh, Denver Moves Transit too. And so unfortunately taking a more micro look um, didn't happen on this, this pass, this particular pass. Can you I know we're coming to the end of the meeting, so. Um, but Mike, I, I, we haven't heard from you, so I'd like to hear your comment on this, this transit section, and then um, we'll try to quickly go into policies and programs and let, I mean, and I don't want to keep you guys past your time, um, 
but and we also need to cover next steps. So quickly, Mike, if you can before. Yeah, I'll try to be real quick. First of all, um, the plan is awesome. I think you guys have done a fantastic job on getting a document like this. I when I opened it up, I couldn't believe how much detail was in there. So kudos for everybody to everything that you put in there. I know they're you're still getting input from people, but I really love the the start of it. Um, I just had a really specific um, comment on um, page 67 of the report that you had as the very last page in the um, in the document. But um, let me just pull it up here. Uh, JP1, it said, evaluate parking restrictions in Jefferson Park and conduct a cap, I'm not sure what that is, if necessary to address event commuter and mile high stadium patron parking demand. Um, I would just uh, like to ask to take the if necessary part of that. I think that this is kind of mandatory. I think, um, you know, especially when we talk about mobility, um, there was a bike lane that was put in, um, you know, on 23rd, and it took about 80 spaces um, out of the way, which is great for bike riders, but it's not awesome for the businesses in the area and in particular, the residents. And I know during the break, there was uh, uh, some discussion about, you know, uh, residential parking permits. And that that's just really an awful program. I mean, we have RPPs in the Jefferson Park neighborhood. They've been around for 20 or 30 years since the last plan was done. Um, most of the people that live in Jefferson Park now are not allowed to get a parking permit on the street because you have to live in a single family home or a duplex. So it's a really antiquated um, you know, system. And most of the people that I talk to in Jefferson Park want those RPP permits eliminated entirely. So um, I just would really love to see this plan have a recommendation for a comprehensive review of that um, permit system and hopefully to eliminate it. So thanks for that. Thank you. No, thank you for your feedback, Mike. Um, we are pretty much at the end of the meeting now, um, but we weren't able to get to the the policies and programs section. So I will ask for you guys to share your input on that via Conveyo. Um, and then I don't know if Sung, if you were going to just cover ne next steps quickly. Yeah, um, like Grace mentioned before, um, we'll leave the Conveyo up for uh, two weeks. So by uh, February 7th to provide more detailed comments. Um, hard copies are available upon request. Um, Councilwoman Sandoval said, um, you know, she's willing to print and make those available for pickup. So if you guys want a copy of the mobility section, please let us know. If you want uh, physical copies of future sections, uh, please let us know. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the highlights for next steps. And uh, Councilwoman Sandoval, you have your hand raised in, I think, three weeks. Um, I was just going to ask if we could have three weeks. Two weeks is really hard to digest for people who have full-time jobs and will probably most likely do this on the weekends. So we're putting a lot of work on our volunteer group here where they'd have this weekend and next weekend. I always prefer to give people as much time as possible. So if they had more time, I feel like I just, two weeks is really hard. I mean, anyone who's going back to work. So that means they'd have this weekend, the 28th and the 4th. If they could have three weekends to work on such an important document, I think we'll get better feedback. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, yeah, I think we could still make that happen. Um, the reason for the two weeks was just to make sure we have enough time to incorporate your feedback as we move along. But um, I think an extra week went hurt. Um, so, And so when I send you guys an email update, I'll um, include that. Thank you, Sung. Great, you're welcome. Um, I think that's about it. So uh, we are one minute over, but thank you again so much for uh, joining us uh, for discussion and also for the general public.
I know we didn't get a chance to go through your questions, but uh, we do have all your specific comments in the chat and uh, we'll definitely be keeping record of that um, and you know using that as public feedback. So thank you everybody so much. Yeah, thank you all thank for, you. for being so thank thoughtful you, and, and the interest tonight. Thank you.